highly, highly recommend it. How much longer do you have the house to yourself? Uh, people are coming home tonight. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't, not like it matters. Uh, yeah, if you're there and you had nothing else to do, Got it's a fun to show to watch. Do some arcane. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. it's just it's just really good storytelling. Or I I've it's seen really some animation bits and it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's been it's beautifully animated. The story and characters are very good. Well, the characters are very good. The story is, you know, it's not bad. It's not even okay. It's good. It's just nothing really to write home about. It's the characters, more importantly. Oh, lovely. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. you you are you are speaking to me there with that. So uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's origin origins for like League of Legends characters. So got you. Okay. Well, to, well, I know nothing about League, well. but I do hear that they do a good job of introducing people to the world and so yeah. forth. So uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it could literally take place in any universe anywhere, and you'd be able to be acclimated to it. Okay, great. So all right, maybe if I, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I have the time to check it out. How many episodes is it? Only seven. They're forty-three minutes. Seven minutes, or I'm sorry, seven episodes, about about forty minutes to an hour long. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that's yeah. not that bad at all. I might, I might uh, here in the next few days um, uh, check it out while I'm still out here in Florida. Uh, yeah, which, by the way. Uh, oh, that's right. The Witcher, t- the Witcher season. T- I have to wait till I get home for that one though, because I already yeah. I, I texted uh, the family about that, and I was like, "Hey, is anybody still interested in this?" And they were all like, "Yeah, we're interested." And I was like, "Okay, well, then I'll, I'll wait until we get back." Um, I have, however, caught up on Hawkeye. Uh, we are up to the, ah, yes. the penultimate episode of that, and uh, that show has only improved as it went forward. I was kind of lukewarm on it at first. I was like, "It's fine. It's not great, but it's it. You know, it's it's okay." Uh, since then, the show has only improved, and it's easily one of the, it's easily one of the stronger Disney Plus shows. Which, for the most part, um, their track record has been pretty damn good uh, on the Disney Plus shows. I think MCU in general is in a is in a pretty good place right now. Um, I'm very excited for the future. I'm excited for all these new characters to to interact with old ones. Like I want to see uh, how Kate Bishop and Yelena and uh, Shang Chi. Uh, interact with characters like spider-man or captain marvel or um um uh who are some of my other favorites dr strange the guardians etc 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 like i'm excited to see everybody interact uh and do more stuff which i mean granted the mcu is at its best when characters from other properties are you know matching up together and so forth Mm -hmm. so right right very 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 excited for all that and with the exception of eternals uh they've just been knocking it out of the park all year so. Yeah, man, Eternals came in with no fanfare. Uh, t- t- oof, oof, hard skip. Hard skip on that yep. one if you're not, like, a hardcore fan. Because um, I'm not even sure anything actually important happened in that movie. <laughs> but, you know, we'll <laughs> see as time goes on. But, Connor, let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, drop some pennies on them. What's poppin', players? Welcome back to the Two Penny Games Cast, episode 74. I am your host, Tav and Bothel, here, at least digitally, uh, with my good friend and co-host, Connor Elliott. Say hello to the people, Connor. Hello. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still in Florida, so we are recording remotely. Connor had to go home to go to his nerdy little anime convention, but, you know, more power to you, buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm tired from it, yeah. so if I seem a little bit lackluster, that's why. You had, a, you had a long night, man. You was hitting the group chat late. You seemed a little, you know, you seemed like you were having a good time. Good time out there. Yeah, I did. I did. There you go. Uh, I was the least messed up and the most functional. You were the least messed up and most functional? Well, no, no. The guy that didn't drink was. Ah, gotcha. gotcha and of everyone that did. Got to have your, your DDs and so forth. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, fantastic. I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, Thank this you. podcast comes to you every Monday, 8 a.m. Uh, Central Time over at YouTube.com slash Two Penny Games Cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice. Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and SoundCloud. Please Go, uh, you know, check those out if you'd rather the audio versions of the podcast. Give it a like, a follow. Spotify just added ratings to their podcast section. So please jump up over there and give us a five-star review on that. That would help out a lot um, to get us circulating and stuff. Spotify is one of our uh, biggest performing platforms that that, uh, we are on. So it would help out a lot if you would do that. Uh, But... If you didn't know, this show is where me and Connor sit down and we give you the new news that you need to know about the video game industry. Uh, We come to you each with two topics, two pennies, if you will, and we give you our two cents on them. However, if that's not enough for you, if you'd rather some kind of uh, uh, visual supplement, some type of of gameplay, some type of fun 
uh, shenanigans. Well, you can run over to twitch.tv slash 2 games where every week at uh, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central Time, me and my good buddy Phil, we sit down and we do a show called Hype, H-Y-E-P, Have You Ever Played?, uh, in which one of us shows the other a video game they've never played before. This last week, we actually had Connor join us, and he was doing uh, his first ever playthrough of Metal Gear Solid, which uh, mm-hmm. we will be getting back to uh, at some point, and will be up on the YouTubes, uh, 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 you know, also at some point. Um, Connor, be, uh, just because yeah. it might be a minute before we uh, we get back to you, what did you think of Metal Gear Solid this last week? Uh, so obviously certain things are dated, like the controls and the graphics. But, sure. Uh, and it it can be one of those games that just kind of drags on because of those things. I'm the kind of guy when I play mechanics that are outdated, sometimes my eyes get a little fuzzy. Mm. And I, I, just, I just lose, I don't lose track of the game, but I, I want to put down the game and come back to it later on. Gotcha. But it doesn't really matter all that much because at the end of the day, the story is interesting. I know very little about the exact beats that happen uh i i knew of more than i thought i did but still not that much overall i still you know scratch my head at just how to do certain boss fights and mm. uh, how, to, how to you know ex- expecting random plot points that are just dropped and i never thought would come into play at all but and there's uh, there's still there's still much more uh to get through uh, for those who uh, missed the stream, it's still up over at twitch.tv slash 2 games, which you can go uh, check that out and watch it right now. Uh, but we made it just past the torture sequence. We broke out of prison, and then uh, we're, we're on our way back uh, to, to destroy Metal Gear. Um, so I don't know when we're going to get back to that. I don't even know if we're going to stream it. We might just record it and throw it up on the YouTubes at some point. Um, but uh, this week, twitch.tv slash 2 games uh, Tuesday... Hopefully 1 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I should be going live uh, with something solo. It won't be a hype series, but just so that we are consistent with every Tuesday, uh, uh, I'll go live with something because I'm still out here in Florida. Next week, though, we will be returning to Phil's playthrough of God of War 2018. Uh, We're going to be getting to the moment, ladies and gentlemen, so make sure you check in for that next week, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central Time, twitch.tv slash 2 games. But if... Uh, streams, live streams aren't really a thing. This week, Tuesday, uh, 8 a.m., we've got the Jack 3 After the Hype review going live at youtube.com slash 2 gamescast And uh, all throughout the week, several parts of the uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 hype playthrough that Phil did for his first time through MGS2 uh, are going live this week as well. So keep an eye out for those. But, Connor, let's get into the news. Let's go ahead and jump into... Um, my first story of the day, my first penny, uh, and that is Square Enix uh, suspends Final Fantasy XIV sales because Endwalker is too popular. This is an article mm-hmm. we're pulling from Polygon by Ryan Gilliam. New players will temporarily be unable to purchase and play Final Fantasy XIV or register for its free trials, Square Enix announced Thursday morning. The company is suspending sales to help ease the, sev- uh, the server congestion that many players have been experiencing since early December. Players have been tr- uh, have had trouble reliably logging into Final Fantasy XIV servers since its new expansion, Endwalker, launched into early access on December 3rd. Two weeks later, the servers are still causing player prob- players problems, causing errors and longer than average queue times while attempting to log in. As a result, Square Enix will temporarily pull Final Fantasy XIV's Starter Edition and Complete Edition from sale, preventing new players from getting in on the hit MMO until existing players have had a chance to get through the new content. Square Enix previously announced that paid players would get priority login access over free trial users, but the company is now suspending new free trial registrations entirely, as it's currently too difficult for them to log in at all. Final Fantasy XIV sales suspensions will start appearing in stores over the next few days. The game is still available on Steam and other retailers at the time of this writing, so it's probably out of date by the time you're hearing this. Uh, However, current players don't have to worry. Square Enix will continue to sell expansions and collector's editions digital upgrades for active players. Quote, to those who have been invited by their friends and family who have been considering joining as well as our retail partners, we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and ask for your understanding and cooperation in order to reduce congestion. 
uh, said producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. Quote, we will continue to monitor the situation as we consider the timing around resuming sales. Uh, as an apology, the studio is also upgrading its free subscription time, which uh, it had previously given players due to Endwalker congestion, from 7 days to 21 days, an additional 2 weeks of playtime. Current advertisements for Endwalker will go on hiatus too, although Square Enix said it cannot suspend them all. Square Enix also addressed player concerns regarding the timing of the new patch and raid, suggesting that some hardcore raiders may not be ready in time due to server issues. The studio revealed that, bar barring a major setback, the new patch and content will still be released January 4th, 2022, regardless of the congestion. This is not the first time Square Enix has suspended Final Fantasy XIV sales. The publisher briefly did so early this year when the game's user base exploded with an influx of new players. So, kind of a humorous reason for uh, as to why uh, a game is being pulled from, from digital sales and digital shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunate for anybody looking to get in on Final Fantasy XIV with the new expansion, especially during the holiday season. I'm sure there's a lot of players who are looking to jump in and all that. But, uh, you know... This is, you know, type kind of the kind of the uh, the pros and cons of being a, you know, a long-standing digital MMO or long-standing games of li uh, uh, li what is it? what is it called? Games of service. Games of service. Um, where sometimes, you know, there's just a bunch of technical problems, and just for quality of life, we need to shut a couple of things down or real quick, or we need to pull things off of shelves, or we need to shut down the servers for maintenance or so forth, uh, in order to to get that moving. Uh, it just kind of sucks that it had to happen here in the holiday season, <laughs> where I'm sure they were expecting a, mm -hmm. a, quite a quite a big pop. Yep, uh, I've heard many people say that this uh, this new expansion is some of the best content Final Fantasy has ever produced in terms of story, in terms of uh, I guess character writing. Uh, it's professed as being amazing, and you just have to get through forty hours of you know mediocre content to get to. <laughs> but, okay. but oh some people would disagree with you on that one you know yeah. there's there's some die hard fans among final fantasy uh, 14 I'm, I'm just regurgitating what i've heard i've never uh, played the game um uh, okay. i i also saw that they are uh releasing for uh playstation players uh those who got final fantasy 7 remake uh through playstation plus will also get a free upgrade of uh uh the ps5 version of the game um which is interesting uh, come, I believe I saw that was coming this Wednesday. Uh, and you, I imagine that is to also offload anybody from playing uh, uh, 14 for now. So they'll be like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't play 14. Let me jump over to 7 Remake, Integrate, all that. Or not Integrate, but just the, the PS5 version of the game. Get all the 60 FPS and the, the, the new textures and so forth. So, anyways, unfortunate. Speaking Go ahead. Speaking of Final Fantasy 7 Remake, uh, Apparently, it's the port for PC that came out recently is very bad. Uh, it, I, I, in what ways is it bad? It. I saw some headlines, but I didn't see anything yeah. specific. Objectively, the $70 price tag people are upset about because it's the same game that was sold for $60 to console players, now all of a sudden randomly upcharged, which, you know, obviously we know that's the way game developers want to price their games now because they claim that the cost of producing their games has gone up, so they have to offset that with an increased price tag. But... Uh, apparently, there's also technical issues, and it just doesn't run as well. It's one of those, you know, messed up ports that has happened in the past. One of the the, the downsides, definitely, to a uh, to playing on PC, where you know, if if a game is not going to be working right out the gate, most of the time it's not going to be. It's going to be because the PC itself has some kind of issue. And you know, apparently, Final Fantasy VII Remake is uh, one of those games. Hmm. Very unfortunate. Uh, yeah, just to, nitpick, specific, just to, specific, just to specific, nitpick specific. and clarify, because we're on the internet, uh, uh, cost of creating games has gone up, but also number of gamers have gone up uh, to kind of offset that cost, and, and uh, more people are buying more games than ever before. So it, it should equal itself out. Actually, it should you know tip more in the scale of publishers than anything else. But what do we know? We're just yeah. morons on the internet. Uh, moving on. Uh, to my second penny of the day. We're just getting it back to back real quick. Uh, Xbox doesn't have enough consoles for their for their tournaments. Connor, uh, pulling uh, a that's a damn shame. I uh, know. Pulling a IGN article from Adam Bankhurst. Uh, Microsoft used Xbox Series X dev kits for its Halo Infinite tournament due to the ongoing chip shortage. 
In another example of how bad the ongoing global chip shortage is, Microsoft couldn't even secure enough Xbox Series X consoles for Halo Infinite's first championship series tournament and instead had to use a mix of retail and development consoles. IGN always has this issue. Uh, uh, retail and development consoles. The Halo esports uh, and viewership lead at Microsoft slash 343 Industries shared the news on Twitter saying open bracket – uh, players would be playing on Xbox Series X development consoles. Fortunately, there is no need for these players or fans to worry, as they are, quote, functionally identical to retail Xbox Series X hardware. Quote, heads up, open bracket players, you'll be playing this weekend on Series X development consoles. Uh, they're functionally identical and will be operating in retail mode, so it's the exact same experience, they just look a little different. Why? Global supply chain shortage is real. Uh, for those unaware, uh, dev kits are the systems used by game developers when creating the games we know and love. They are generally not made available to the public, and it's rare to see one at an official tournament. The chip shortage is impacting many beyond Microsoft as Nintendo cut its Switch production down 20% uh, due to it, and Sony reportedly cut production of its PS5 consoles by 1 million. A recent report said that this shortage affecting gaming uh, will remain very tight until at least September 2022. The first Halo Infinite Championship Series tournament features runs from December 17th through 19th and features 272 com uh, teams competing for a prize pool of $250,000 uh, plus crowdfunding. Uh, so it's already over. <laughs> the open, yeah. the open uh, tournament is already over. Uh, but humorous uh, that they had, to, they had to dip into their own personal supplies for all of that why are we not just using pcs uh i do know that the problem is uh the price tag of them and it's set up as well because okay. uh, as far as fighting games are concerned i know that michael i, I asked this to our, uh, our my friend michael about why people don't just do pc because sometimes that's the better way to play a game the issue lies in the fact that you have to have the setups for them it's a lot more obviously complicated than just having a single you know well, I don't know. I guess the setup's the same way, but the, anyway, it, it's really the price is the big part, and getting all just, PCs to work. You're going to get more consistent uh, 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 results, I guess. On I'm assuming, I, I guess on a console, games crash less than they do on PC on console, and uh, uh, it's just easy to just have a, a built-in, you know exactly what you're getting box. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I know with fighting games, you sometimes can plug something in, and it doesn't work. And some weird, random solution needs to be found for it to happen. So things like that can happen on PC as well, for uh, even something like Halo Infinite. Oh, we're going to get we're gonna get into some of that later, I promise you, especially with Halo <laughs> Infinite. But moving on, Connor, uh, let's go ahead and jump into topic number three, your first penny Enjoy. of the day. Uh, Hades wins a Hugo Award, making history as first video game to ever do so. This is a Kotaku article by Zach uh, Zweizen. Uh, sorry, Zach, if I mispronounced that. Uh, yesterday, Hades made history by becoming the first video game to ever win a Hugo Award, an annual literary award presented to the best science fiction or fantasy works from the previous year. Hades was developed by Supergiant Games and released after a period in early access last year. Supergiant Games creative director uh, Greg Kasvin tweeted his reaction to Hades winning the historic award, stating that although he hasn't, a, uh, he wasn't able to make it to the award ceremony, he was grateful that the Hugo Awards are recognizing work in this category, much less the work quote we did. Uh, Hades, developed by Supergiant, was a smash hit. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The other games nominated by the Hugo Awards this year were uh, Spirit Fair, The Last of Us Two, Animal Crossing: New Horizons, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Blaze Ball. Uh, the Hugo Awards are an annual literary award given to various sci-fi and fantasy works at the World Science Fiction Convention early uh, every year. Normally, video games aren't nominated for the award. However, this year a new category was introduced for video games. This follows years of conversations among the governing members be Behind the prestigious and long-running Hugo Awards, the new category is only, at least for now, a one-off thing, but it could continue in the future. In recent years, the Hugo Awards have continued to expand beyond traditional literary works and authors. Past new categories added to the prestigious awards include Best Fanzine or Best Fan Cast, uh, 
an award honoring great sci-fi and fantasy focused podcasts and video series. It's likely that as gaming becomes more popular and continues to tell bigger and better stories involving sci-fi or fantasy, the Hugo Awards will look to add a more permanent award category for video games. So, first of all, congratulations, Hades and uh, Supergiant Games, uh, to just continuing to just uh, uh, rake in the accolades uh, for really just one of the greatest video games ever made. Uh, mm-hmm. It know, really is. I know uh, our friend Fergus, who has been heard on some of our uh, Two Penny Games streams, uh, has been playing a lot of Hades lately, and he's just absolutely loving it. Um, and Wait, it he just, got it. Huh? He got it. He did. He did indeed. And he's, you know, he's been playing... Put in a, a couple of hours into it, and he, he, me, and him were talking last night on stream. He was like, "Man, that game's a lot of fun." I was like, "I know it is, man. It's really good, isn't it?" Um, I just brought it up to him not too long ago, and he was saying he was thinking about getting it. I'm surprised he got it. Yeah, and First then uh, I know you dabbled uh, with it for a little bit while you were here. Um, yes, and just fell and fell right back down that hole. So yeah, congratulations, Super Giant. Remembered how good it is once again. It's a phenomenal fucking video game. Um, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, that that's one that it's never gonna leave my it's never gonna leave my switch. It's always gonna be on there. Um, yeah, it needs to be. Kind of surprising it took the Hugo Awards this long to uh, include video games. Like video games have been popular for quite a while now. It's the number one uh, earning uh, medium. Like it outsells every other medium: film, TV, books, uh, music, put together. Like it just out. Like it's just the most. Uh, um, financially successful entertainment medium out there granted mobile games do a lot of heavy lifting when you when you talk about that with their microtransactions and so forth uh but you know the console and the uh triple a space with uh, uh pc gaming and so forth there's nothing to sneeze at either um but you know as far as like uh, a year to do it last year was a good year to to include it uh you know final fantasy 7 remake last of us 2 spirit fairer animal crossing hades a lot of great, lot of great nominations in that list, um, but it's especially confusing to me considering how science fiction and fantasy based video games have always been. I mean, you know, just to, like it's it's the natural evolution of Dungeons and Dragons, you know. So it's just it's a little yeah. strange that it took this long to me, but you know, uh, it's all great. And then I also assume Hades also won because it's tied into uh, Greek mythology, um, so using. Uh, a more um, historic base uh, or foundation gave it probably a, a literary, mm-hmm. ed- a quote unquote literary. When you're focused on literary accomplishments, gave it an edge as opposed to games like um, Seven Remake and and Last of Us Two, which exactly. I think. Not to mention. Go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I was just going to mention that. Also, there is it's voiced over, but there's reading to be done where you have the text box and whatnot, which none of the other games on, on the list had. Something like that, if I remember. Uh, um, I, so. I, I, I mean, you know, there's there's reading in you know all of these games, you know, picking up diaries and so forth and reading through that. But the you know there it, it is the, there's no like text boxes. Well, uh, Seven Remake has text boxes for like their side quests or something. I think. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, text um, stuff. But yeah, I, I I would lean it more towards it being based in Greek mythology rather than um, just the others being uh, a, uh, original IPs and so forth. I mean, personally, I think Last of Us 2 is a better written game than Hades, but uh, mm-hmm. that's no that's no slight at Hades. Hades is a really well-written game with really great and charismatic characters. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but congratulations to Supergiant Games once again. You and I were just talking this last week of, like, how we need to – we need to, you know, dive down the super giant hole and go back and replay and, and play games like Bastion and Transistor and all that, uh, because they're the. I I think Super Giant is going to just co- constantly grow and just become one of the one of the greats of this industry. Yeah, it sounds like it's going towards that angle right now. Yep. If, if any of their past games are any, anything to go off of. No kidding. All right. So moving on to our final topic of the day, Connor, your final penny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Splinter Cell's back, baby. Uh, we're pulling an IGN article from Matt Perslow. Nice. Ubisoft announces Splinter Cell remake. Ubisoft has announced that it it has greenlit the development of a remake of its stealth classic Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Announced on Ubisoft's website, the remake will be developed by lead studio Ubisoft Toronto, the developers of Splinter Cell 
Blacklist. It would be built from the ground up using the Snowdrop engine, which is the tech being used for the Division games, the upcoming Avatar Frontiers of Pandora game, and Ubisoft's as yet untitled Star Wars game. In an interview posted to the Ubisoft website, producer uh, Matt West said, I think it's, it, uh, quote, it, I think it kind of has to be a remake as opposed to a remaster, although we're still in the very earliest stages of development. What we're trying to do is make sure the spirit of the early games remains intact in all the ways that gave early Splinter Cell its identity. Uh, part of keeping that remake true to the series' identity is that it will be a linear game and not open world akin to many other Ubisoft games. As for the gameplay that happens within those linear levels, the emphasis is once again on stealth, not action. Quote, it's safe to say uh, a lot of us on the team are stealth purists, and we're behind that level of seriousness when it comes to those kinds of mechanics and those sorts of of things that we want to see in this game, says Chris Audi, Splinter Cell's new creative director. Uh, quote, and we're very, very aware of what makes classic Splinter Cell what it is. Uh, it's important for us to preserve the sense of mastery by supporting players who uh, observe, observe the situations, make their plan, use their gadgets, and outsmart the enemy to creatively uh, outsmart the enemy creatively to deal with the challenges they are presented with. <coughs> Excuse me. Ideally, they end up coming out on the other side with knowing no one having realized that they were even there. That's the essence of Splinter Cell. Uh, the gameplay experience we are targeting is directly tied to what we want players to feel to capture the essence back when we were all playing the original games, said West. It's unclear if anyone from the original Splinter Cell team is working on this remake, but technical producer Peter uh, Handrinos says that series veterans are part of the new team. Quote, there are a lot of vets here, so we're going to have a really good mix of people who have worked on previous Splinter Cell games and new team members who are joining and bringing fresh energy and fresh ideas, he said. But it looks like this remake could just be the start of Ubisoft, Ubisoft's revised efforts on Splinter Cell. Quote, with this remake, we are building a solid base for the future of Splinter Cell, Audi said. Uh, while this is the first true Splinter Cell game for many years, Ubisoft also announced last year that a Splinter Cell VR game is in development with two Splinter Cell games in active production. It means Sam Fisher's curse of being relegated to a guest star in every other Tom Clancy game from Ghost Recon mm -hmm. to Rainbow Six seems to finally be over. Uh, so this is very exciting. Connor, you, uh, not, not you know, the, the biggest Splinter Cell fan, but I do believe you enjoyed Blacklist, uh, uh, you know, here and there. Back oh, yeah, in the day. very much so. Like, I wasn't as crazy about it as you as Fergus. Well, as much as you or the multiplayer as much as Fergus and you were. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm more on the modern side of Splinter Cell with uh, Conviction and Blacklist. I didn't really uh, play the, the older games, but I've seen gameplay of it, and the creativity in those games is fucking phenomenal. And I'm super, super excited to see a lot of those functions come back um, in in uh, with a modern coat of paint. Um as for it just being a uh, the original game remade, um, sure that's a little disappointing. I would rather a new a new adventure, but I'm sure this is just uh, a way that Ubisoft can, you know, they can put some money into Splinter Cell, but they're not like putting a whole bunch of resources in it. This is them testing the waters to see if it's worth investing in a new game all around. I imagine EA is doing something very similar with Dead Space with the Dead Space remake. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, I, I I am just mostly just excited that Splinter Cell is back. I hope they get it right. I hope they do uh, uh, the original game justice, and I hope they you know they really put in some uh, effort into the stealth genre, which um, is in a strange place right now. Where sometimes we'll have a, a stealth game that really knocks it out of the park, like a Dishonored, um, you know, but you know, which will meet may uh, be met with you know just kind of okay sales um or we'll have a watered down stealth experience with games like assassin's creed or um uh uh you know last of us uh i wouldn't call watered down but it doesn't have the most advanced stealth mechanics um you know so i, I I'm, I'm excited to have a game for purists like like myself where i really like to just sit down examine the terrain you know, get that classic Splinter Cell experience, that classic Metal Gear Solid experience, that classic Thief experience, um, and just just dive in and, and go balls deep into all of that. So uh, we'll have to see. 
uh, it is unfortunate that, you know, we're uh, we're clearly not going to get this game until 2024 at the earliest, probably. Probably not even till 25 or 26 even. Um, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, also, very strange, they just announced this on a random Wednesday. Uh, the week after the Game Awards. You didn't you didn't want a bigger pop, Ubisoft? I'm sure I'm sure Keeley would have uh, let you on their stage uh, for something like this, but maybe it's just they they didn't get it until the week of or something. But they had a whole they had a whole like documentary package prepped, a whole video where they you know talked about the legacy of Splinter Cell and what made Splinter Cell great and the the uh, how innovative the uh, the uh, the shadow mechanics were back in the day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why they just chose a random Wednesday to do all this, but you know. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Connor, any thoughts about this? Any excitements? Any things you're wanting to see? Any things uh, you're, you're, you're passionate about here? Not super passionate about it because it, it, it adds, as you said. Oh, you're, you're cutting out just a little bit there, buddy. Can you, uh, can you repeat that? Drop it out of nowhere. It not have any. Connor. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my, okay. my my bad friend. You you were cutting out there. The internet was failing us there. Can you can you repeat that real quick? Yeah, yeah. So um, I remember we were talking a while, not too long ago, about what they could be doing with a new Splinter Cell game, and we had floated the idea of like it being open world potentially, but it could also just be you know the original, kind of like the original one, where you just have levels and levels and levels. So it's good that it's not going anywhere too crazy because Splinter Cell is in need of a more stable game one that doesn't really that they it is more uh will have a higher chance of being good out the gate because you know i i would like to see splinter cell go on in other forms i, I hope this isn't just a you know one-time game that does okay and ubisoft decides we don't really have any need to chase after it anymore so uh, i mean at least they won't have to make it from the ground up. They can use the base of a game that mm-hmm. we are. Well, I'm assuming fans like the first one. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yes, about fans what like the first one. On. Okay, so there you go. It'll get the fans in, and it could get us interested in it to not be playing like a a game made in the early 2000s. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, I'll, it, I'll clarify. It's not the fan favorite, but it is. It is a well liked no. game. It's just because it's 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 a foundation game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. So, I mean, weird that they've been, you know, they've, they're doing this as it is, like they did their video and dropping it randomly on a Wednesday. But, you know, I, I think we'll be, uh, there will be people that are paying attention to this and want to hear more about it as it gets closer to the release date, whatever that is. Me included. Uh, you make a great yeah. point there with uh, what we talked about before with, um, you know, hypothesizing what, what would Splinter Cell be in the modern age and where Ubisoft is at with most of its games right now. I don't want, uh, I, and and I lamented, you know, in the past about how I didn't want Splinter Cell to go the way of Ghost Recon. I didn't want it to go the way of Assassin's Creed. I didn't want this open world far, or or the way of Far Cry, where it's open world, check off, uh, uh, you know, you have a checklist of things that you can do and clear a map, fog of war, all that stuff. Ugh, gross. Absolutely not. Keep that out of uh, uh, Splinter Cell, especially with the success that Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain had. I don't think stealth games work in open world settings. I think, you know, as you mentioned, when they're more level by level based, it's a little more handcrafted. It's a little more tailored, uh, uh, specific tailored experience. And I think games like Hitman and the success of Hitman have really, really shown um, uh, just how uh, important that that level by level, uh, detailed, uh, tailored experience is to the stealth genre. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very excited that they're saying, Hey, it's not going to be that it is going to be what you remember. Uh, and what they're, they're, they're very clear, clearly saying, we know what Splinter Cell fans want and, and we're here to give it to you. Uh, I think this, I think this will hopefully lead to a, to a, I, I, I hope this will lead to a phenomenal game that everyone's going to love and, you know, does crazy sales, but, um, just to be, just to, to throw a nugget of realism or pessimism in here, um, you know, it'll probably just be a, a a solid game or a pretty good game that uh, will just prove that the brand of Splinter Cell is not dead and that there's room in this franchise to grow. I wouldn't mind even growing past, uh, 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 you know, the regular things. Like we we can we can expand Splinter Cell as a brand. I think Splinter Cell as a brand 
uh, still has a lot of potential. You know that isn't just stealth. It, uh, it could be it could be an action game or whatever, but I don't think that's a very good route to go. Uh, but it could be a dope strategy game. Could be a dope RTS. Maybe I could see that working. Um, or or some kind of sim game. You know, um, where you're you're growing resources and so forth. But as a start, as a as a way to just hey kickstart and show that there is still a want for this brand to grow. I think a, a a remake of the first game is a is a smart direction to take it. Mm-hmm. Connor, that is it, it for the news this week. So let's go ahead and jump into what we've been playing now. Shortly, I am going to get into a uh, a Halo campaign. We're gonna call it a review in progress, really, because I'm not I'm not done with it. I'm still working my way through it, but I have been playing the Halo Infinite campaign. But first, before we do the deep dive into that. Uh, uh, Connor, while you were here, we finally polished off It Takes Two. Yeah, finally completed that game. We didn't have much longer left to play. No, we, we had two, two levels left. Mm-hmm. So it yep. took us three, four hours to, to, to polish off. We have finally played the game of the year. We have played uh, the game of the year 2021. And uh, overall, I, I think this is a good game. It's worth your time. It is worth its asking price, definitely. Um and I think it's a I think it's a very interesting pick uh, for game of the year um, in a year where there's been a lot of really great games. Um, but um, me personally, I don't uh, quite understand the accolades of it. I'm glad that it's getting those accolades, especially because it's a smaller team, and what they were able to produce is really incredible for the size of the team. Um, and I think on many many notes that they really knocked it out of the park. There were many, many levels in the game that I thought were really well crafted, and you know had you and I working together in really creative ways. Um, I thought there were several story beats that were very, very good and interesting and, and heartfelt. Um, but I did feel in the middle there was a lot of filler, and I did feel like it was a game that uh, we could only play in smaller bursts. We could only go a couple of hours with two, three hours before it's before it started overstaying its welcome. And I feel like the game as a whole was a little longer than I would have liked it to have been. I remember there were multiple points where, when we were playing it this final time, I wanted to stop playing it, but I kind of had to push myself through because I knew the game was ending. It, it really did happen a lot, where you just kind of, where at least you and me both were like, eh, I don't, wanna, don't really want to play this anymore. It's, but it would also be like, every time we point. picked it up, we would be like, well, this is joyous. This is this is fun. This is solid. Oh, yeah. Before that point, I, I'd always just be having a grand old time. Yeah. It just went over as the game went on. Which, to be fair, the game is probably structured in a way to where, like, you play one level, and then you put it down. You come back the next day, and you play another level, and you put it down and come back. Whereas we were playing two, three, four-level sprints, which, you know, it did fatigue us on it. Um, But overall, you know, I I thought it was a good game. Not a great game. Um, And, you know, congratulations to – I forget the name of that studio – it's the Joseph Ferris studio. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, congratulations to that team uh, for uh, 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 having a, a, a big splash this year and uh, taking home Hazelight, Hazelight Studios. Uh, hey. Congratulations to them for taking home all these great accolades uh, last week. Connor, what else have you been playing, my man? Uh, well, the big thing, I haven't had much time to play games. I've been running around with my head cut off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I finally got my hands on one of the next fighting games that just got a release date for this summer, 2022. And that's called Dungeon Fighter Online, DNF. Uh, so this is a... Uh, it uses characters from a game, a Korean game called Dungeon Fighter Online. It's kind of like an MMO, but not really. Uh, it's The combat isn't like traditional MMO. It doesn't even look like a traditional MMO. It's actually 2D. Uh, 2.5D, I think is probably the better term for it. And there's a lot of button mashing and doing big moves. So a lot of that is in this game. Wait, I'm and sorry, this is a fighting like, game or a, or a MMO game? A, it's, it's a fighting game based off of an MMO. That's oh, where okay. the character's coming from. Yeah, you know, you're fine. Uh, it's, so far, it, it has some pretty interesting systems, as I've come to find out, and the beta itself has been interesting, not in the best of ways. So... Uh, I'll start off with gameplay, which is the good part, because it's very, very reliant on doing moves called specials. So, for example, like a fireball or a, a, the – the uh, what's what does what Ryu say whenever he does that punch? Uh, like a – Shoryuken. 
uh, like that kind of that, that's that's the fireball. Uh, oh, uh, then I have no idea. Yeah, but that's a special move. It's it's a it's a powerful move with certain special properties. Uh, the game is heavily reliant on those, and you spend meter doing those kinds of attacks, and you're constantly doing them. Meter being the thing that you draw on for certain special mechanics that will vary depending on which fighting game you're talking about. Uh, so that leads to characters being very, very flashy and fun to look at, which is a great part about this game, because all of the characters I've played, I have certain ones that I like more than others, and, and that's the case with every fighting game. But this is the first one, and I've seen many people online have this same kind of experience, uh, play all these different characters and like every single one of them, because the game just naturally feels fun and good to play, and all the characters are uh, fairly well made and easy to pick up for uh, anybody just jumping on the game for the first time because compared to something like the king of fighters beta that i got my hands on pretty recently where jumping into that game me and my friends couldn't really do any high level or even you know mid level executions because you have to know the systems and you have to do the button inputs and it's very complicated this one's a lot more easy to do and it really seems like this is going to be more tailor-made like guilty gear strive to be more uh, of an introductory game for new fighting game players uh, part of the reason why the characters probably look so flashy and cool to play as. Uh, but so fundamentally, the game's very fun, and I really want to get my hands on it more. The issue is, is the beta does something that no beta for a fighting game that I've ever played or heard of does, which is not having a training mode, so you can't practice the moves of the characters ah. outside of a match. Yeah, and, you know, there's not really a way from what I can remember to look up the move list. So thankfully they released it online, but unless you go to a third source somewhere else, you can't get the move list. Let me just have the printout of my moves real quick over here on my side. Yeah. What? Literally, you have to, yeah, and you literally you have to do that. There's no versus mode, so you can't even play with people on the same console. So it's entirely reliant on matching with people. Now, in the same way that when games that have a multiplayer element first come out or if they have a beta that's, you know, going on, there's going to be technical difficulties. So people have been unable to, and, and there have been multiple ones. It's been hard to get games, so you're not playing the game, because you can't go to offline things like versus mode or training mode. You're entirely reliant on multiplayer. Can't, even fight, a, can't even fight a CPU? Can't even fight a CPU. No. That's insane. Yeah, it's never been, I've never heard of this before. So between that and the technical difficulties, it's definitely not a good beta, but the game has really good points. Now, it does need some working on as well, because there are many characters who have infinites. So, pretty much you do a certain move in a certain way, and you just do it over and over and over again, and there's no way to get out of it. And you just kill them. If there's one who has that, and you can easily do it with a simple input, and you just do that input over and over and over again, and you automatically win the game. And it's not, it's not hard to do at all. There's other uh, similar, not, not touch of death combos, but there's other you know, attacks that just go on and on and on. So, for example, one character causes this, like, burning cross to appear behind his opponent. Now, the point of it is to attack from both sides. They can't really go on the offensive. You've got them locked down. Now, the problem is, is that when you eventually hit them and do damage to them, basically what you could do if you do a certain button input is hit them back against that cross and they bounce back to you, and you hit them again, and they bounce back to the cross, and you just keep doing that over and over again until the cross disappears, which is a very long time. A lot so, of free damage. D yeah, a lot of free damage. So it's it's already a high damage character, so you can obviously see the problems that can come up from that. So clearly the game needs some working on. Of course, <laughs> every, this is the purpose of a beta. Hopefully in the next one, whatever that is, we'll be able to see more characters and they'll finally get those kinks worked out. Maybe add a training mode for one. <laughs> that, that's all I would want is training mode. Mm, like I get mm. Versus mode, it shouldn't be difficult to put that in if you're having an online lobby, but... You know, at least just give us training mode so we can get our hands on the characters to know how they feel so we can maybe get an idea of who we want to play when the game finally comes out. I mean, but how hard is it to load in just a just a I mean, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's difficult to make, but like you're just loading in a, a, a like a basically an NPC uh, of just some random default character and then, you know, allowing the player to to wail on it to practice combos and moves. Yeah, from my perspective, because they have the online lobby and the online lobby, it's made by Arc Systems Works. Mm -hmm. So their online lobbies always kind of have like a special flair to it, depending on the game you are. You're, you're 
playing. So for Dungeon Fighter Online, you choose an avatar and you walk around a, 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 two po- a 3D room and get on game stations to match up with other people. Weird. Rather than just clicking, you know, search for game. So, you know, yeah, yeah, a, first of a all, more server problems. non-traditional uh, uh, menu. Yeah, so, you know, server problems, like I said before, were a problem. But as you said, there's no reason to not have something like that. While Especially also in your beta, why, why focus resources on that element? Like, just give us a, a menu. No? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish menus were more common. Like, maybe there's some weird way fighting games work, and it just it's not the best way to match up with people. But I don't find that. Well, no, that that wouldn't make sense because Melty Blood Type Lumina has a really good uh, match uh, uh, matchmaking process. At least I found it easy. Never really had any problems with it. And you just search for a game, and you're paired up with someone at random, and you can choose to you ready up and play with them or not. This game doesn't have that. It's purely online and in that lobby form with server problems. So, not the best beta. But overall, you're 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 positive on the game itself. It just the game itself is good. Just from need some more, what some I played work. so far, yeah, yeah. not the no. best implementation of a of a taste. Okay, no, very very no, interesting. But, no. but it you know at least it's We're doing what it, it's doing what uh, uh, needs to be done for a beta. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I'll tell you, man, I'm I'm quite interested in in the uh, the the port of. Uh, just because we're talking fighting games, uh, that port of uh, Persona Four uh, uh, Arena Max Fight, whatever it's called. Yeah, uh, Persona Four Arena Ultimax. Ultimax. It's called. That that's it. That's Ultimax. March, I think. I just saw. I just, yes, I, yes. I just saw the clip from the. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna kind of just allow that game to kind of just be my introduction to uh, some fighting games, or like you know, just to give it a give it a shot because Persona Four Golden, uh, one of my favorite video games of all time. And uh, uh, I just love the style and the look of, of Ultimax. So I'm excited to try that out. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. I've been wanting to play that for a while, but because it was locked on PS3, I had no options. Mm-hmm. But now I do. Now so we do. It'd be fun to play that with you. There we go. All right. Connor, let's go ahead and jump into uh, a, a quasi-review of Halo Infinite's campaign. Halo Infinite mm-hmm. uh, full released happened uh, last week actually uh but you know we were out uh adventuring throughout florida and uh we were busy with the game awards and a whole bunch of other stuff so i haven't had really a whole lot of time to play it you haven't had any time to play it um so i'm about eight hours in give or take um the you know uh, i've been playing around in the open world for quite a while uh and uh, i i just hit the uh, that first gameplay demo that they did uh, w- uh, over a year ago, uh, which I believe uh, we covered actually on the first ever episode of this podcast. Oh, I think we. I'll check. So I just I just hit that segment just now, um, and overall, my impressions or 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 my feelings of Halo Infinite's campaign are super super positive. Um, there were uh, there are a few things that I wish were a little different. Um, but overall, I'm having a really, really good time, and it's it's cemented Halo Infinite to me as just one of the best games this year. Alongside, um, they've released more playlists and, and game modes for the multiplayer side of things, and they're making the, the battle pass easier to work through. I played three matches today and leveled up two or three times, uh, which, yeah, okay. which was very, very nice to do. Um, and then, but most of my time this last week has been focused on the the campaign. Uh, so it starts out fairly regularly, uh, and in a really cool action set PC way to kind of get you introduced and hyped into that. And there is just tons of fan service throughout all of it. This game, as a whole, right. is just doing its best to make Master Chief look badass and cool as much as possible. But I am starting to get notes of hey we might actually be taking the character of master chief in some kind of direction here soon at least i hope that's where they're going with some of the things i'm seeing so far um the story uh i mean so far i I think it's bare i think the story has been burying its lead um the first four hours or so i really wasn't interested at all in anything they were giving me it was a lot of Mm -hmm. the stuff with the banished which is the new uh covenant faction um, this time around, that was featured in Halo Wars Two. Um, they're fine. They're just they're just aliens that you can go and fight. Um, uh-huh. 
and you know it's all the returning favorites your jackals your brutes your elites your grunts they're all they're all there um as i'm exploring uh uh the zeta ring i believe it's called the halo ring that the, the game takes place on i am discovering new enemy types um which i am enjoying their introduction like i've just found them uh, i've been fighting uh, uh the banished the whole time but i've just now found uh, some new enemy types, which I've been enjoying their inclusion in that quite a bit. Um, and they're hinting at a brand new enemy type that is going to be, um, they, they've, they've, they've introduced it as a, as, as a, no real spoiler, but as like the big threat. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm very interested to see what that's going to be. Um, and they're, int- and you know, they're continuing their, some of the, some of the dangling threads that have been, uh, left off from previous Halo games. As a note, I never finished the Halo 5 campaign. I played the first couple of hours, wasn't really into it, stopped playing. Halo 4, I really enjoyed the story, thought the level structure wasn't the best, um, and the uh, the Promethean Knights and the Prometheans just in general um, wasn't super into. Um, mm-hmm. With this game, so far, I've just been enjoying all of the enemy types. I have been enjoying the open world uh, where it's it's pretty much it's it's laid out kind of like a far cry game where it's there are enemy bases go clear out those bases when you clear out the bases more uh uh spots on the map will pop up and you'll get ambushed along the way and you'll go and you'll uh recruit more marines who are scattered throughout the ring and you'll go and save them and bring them back to base and so forth uh there's propaganda towers that you can destroy and there's weapon caches and upgrade caches that you can go out and find and stuff there are um cosmetic things that you can go and acquire for multiplayer which is nice Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good way to get to do that. Um, uh, so, like, yeah, I've found things like weapon skins, and I've found uh, uh, player banners and uh, some some other smaller stuff. Uh, nothing, like, too big or too serious so far, but it's probably there, and I just haven't dug into that. Um, and I, I, I'll say the, the, the world is interesting enough to where I am wanting to go around and... and clear everything out but uh it doesn't it's not an endless pool of entertainment and an endless pool of fun that like games like far cry are uh and i very quickly was like okay i'm ready for story missions and now i'm like Mm -hmm. in the story missions and i'm really enjoying those and i'm really enjoying the structure of them and and how they're built out um it did take me a while to enjoy that structure of them because a lot of the early missions are introducing things like (coughs) excuse me introducing things like open world mechanics uh like the the fobs and the uh just the the banished bases and the the you know acquiring different upgrades and so forth um all of the spartan equipment um i think is super well implemented to where you have all of the spartan equipment at all times and then you just switch them out uh with a press of a button like how you switch out grenades so at any moment i'm using the grappling hook or i'm using uh the radar scanner or i'm using um uh the drop shield uh and everything's just based on cooldowns and you can upgrade them to make them more effective and their cooldowns to lessen and you can upgrade your shields to make master chief more of a tank and so forth i'm enjoying all of that um the 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 new guns work just as well in the campaign as they work in uh multiplayer we already talked about that in our halo infinite uh multiplayer review uh where again I'm enjoying most of them. Some of them, little hit and miss, not really working for me. Um, and you know, but having more time to play with some of those power weapons uh, has allowed me to be more familiar with them in multiplayer. So I am finding more success in multiplayer um, with certain weapons like uh, the shockwave or uh, the Hydra launcher, um, which is very nice and very satisfying to 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 uh, see. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but other than that, yeah, gameplay, still great, still classic Halo. I really want to speak on it. What, what, what is really um, catching me about the campaign is that it is it has re-sparked the sense of wonder that I felt playing the first Halo game. Now, Halo 1 is not my was not the first Halo game I played. I started with 3, then played Reach, and then went back and played 1 and 2. But there is a sense of wonder when you play that first game, and you can still feel it. Um, that I don't think any other Halo game has touched on, where you're exploring the world, you're going through, you're being introduced uh, to the, the the Halo universe as a whole, and it's just always 
fantastic to be in that atmosphere, to be in that uh, world, to be in that uh, um, environment and, and have that sort of um, feeling as you traverse that world, which hasn't really been recreated, in my opinion, since that first game. Um, so uh, the way that they've been able to re-spark that interest, I, I think, is just phenomenal. I do want to know what this new uh, threat is. I do want to continue going around uh, the the ring and exploring and picking up different marine troops and saving them. And, you know, my favorite thing to do, Connor, is to actually mm-hmm. get jump into one of the uh, uh, variants of the Warthog that actually doesn't have a gunner seat but is actually meant to carry, uh, uh, like, f- f- up to five Marines in the back. You know the one I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. From from past games. Usually, yeah. just a completely useless variant of the Warthog, but in this game, yep. uh, I fucking love it. Like, I'm using it more than any other variant of the, of the Warthog. I don't... Uh, because it's just me running around with a bunch of Marines who all, like, have a variety of weapons. Some of them have shotguns. Some of them have rocket launchers. Some of them have sniper rifles. Um, and, you know, of course, and then some of them are equipped with more basic weapons like assault rifles or whatever. But, yeah. you know, I'll hop into one of these uh, Warthogs. I believe they're called Ravagers in this game or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll just load up with five Marines. They'll all jump in. They'll all have varying uh, weapons. And we will just run circles around them. And because there's five of them, they end up doing more damage than uh, uh, the normal chain gun variant of the Warthog, which I think is hilarious. But also it's like, okay, there's an enemy base. Let me drive this Warthog right in the middle of the enemy base. We'll all hop out and we'll all cause havoc and run around and fuck shit up together. And it's it's really led to a play style that I have never used in a Halo game before um, with specifically with using the Marines with me or, or alongside me, which is really fun and exciting to, to, to do. Um, and then just, you know, having your squad of people where it's like, all right, man, I got my rocket launcher dude, I got my sniper dude, and I got a couple of shotgunners. Let's go tear shit up. Let's go run around and, and liberate this map um, from the Banished. It, and it's just an experience that I've never had in a Halo game before. Um, but it does lead to me kind of, I'm losing the plot a little bit sometimes, or I was early on now that I'm, you know, more story focused right now and I'm getting into it and there, the, the, the mystery is starting to reveal itself and the layers of the storytelling are starting to, uh, unravel and the characters are interacting more and more. I'm really starting to dig all of that. Uh, you've got two side characters in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, one of which has been heavily involved in the promotion, which is the pilot character. Uh, who flies the the uh, pelican around for you? Uh, he's great. He's kind of just m- always miserable to be there, and he's always just upset. And you know, every time something uh, comes up, Chief is like, "Yeah, we got to go do this." And the guy's like, "No, can we just go home? Why can't we just go home?" <laughs> um, uh, so I'm really, really enjoying those interactions. On top of that, um, the new uh, AI uh, in the place of Cortana called Weapon. Uh, Weapon is sort of like a it's still the cortana model um but she's more uh almost innocent she's less sarcastic she's more she's got more like wonderment behind her eyes than cortana did um still voiced by the same actress and every time she pops up in my head i go oh cortana but the remnants of cortana are still in this game and again i don't know what happened at the end of halo 5 i know it left off on a cliffhanger i know that people weren't super st- uh, psyched with where they took Car- cortana's character in that game um but what i'm seeing now because you know there's still elements of cortana hanging around uh for various reasons uh that are intriguing me in- immensely um mm-hmm. and but the the plucky nature of weapon is uh uh I do enjoy it. I love when she's like, when she's like, oh man, what are we going to do about this? And Chief just gives a very blunt, straight to the point answer, you know, uh, where he'll be like, we're going to, we'll destroy it. Or like, he'll, we'll just, uh, we'll take care of it. Or uh, she'll be like, man, what, uh, like, um, when the, the new threat, when the new threat was first introduced, she was like, oh man, uh, what, what could be more dangerous than the flood, I think is the line. And Chief just goes, nothing good. And it's just, it's just the, she goes, oh, okay. And then, you know, there's another moment where Chief is like, uh, Chief says he's dangerous or something. And then a little while la- longer, or I'm sorry, a little later down the line, she goes, 
you remember when you said that you were dangerous? You were right. You are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, I just like her, man. She's just a charming little, like, uh, uh, like just optimistic, like, glass half full. That's the same thing twice. Um, almost, almost just innocent uh, uh, view or take on an AI character. And I'm really, really enjoying mm-hmm. um, how she's uh, uh, bouncing off a of chief and how they're interacting. And some of the early hints that I'm picking up of where they're going to take this relationship in the future, I think are going to be really, really interesting in how they speak to chief's character. Um, and mm-hmm. what they plan on doing with Chief's character. Um, but, yeah, overall, really, really happy with Halo Infinite uh, campaign. It's not um, as great as I was hoping it would be, um, but it's better than I was expecting it to be, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, so, right. you had high expectations, but... Whoa, whoa, you had, you had high hopes, but lower expectations. High hopes, lower expectations, yes, sir. So, uh, I'm excited to continue playing, and I'm excited to... to get to the end of this journey uh, here nice. in the next coming uh, couple of days. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll be able to print it soon. Hopefully. Connor, that is going to be it for the Two Penny Games Cast episode 74. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Uh, remember, you can catch us every Monday, 8 a.m., youtube.com slash Two Penny Games Cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice. Please, please, please go over to Spotify and give us uh, a five-star rating over there so that we can get in front of more people and more eyes and and uh, more ears and so forth. That's one of our higher performing platforms, and it would mean a lot if you could help us uh, get into people's recommendations and and um, into people's rotations like that. Uh, which is it's just a couple of clicks. You know, you just click on the the podcast page, and then it should be just right there, right underneath the the uh, the podcast logo. Uh, just a quick five star review that would really be appreciated. My dog needs to stop. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, and remember, twitch.tv slash two penny games. Tuesday, 1 p.m., we go live. We do a big, long, uh, day long stream. It's all going to be very fun, very exciting. Uh, catch me probably just playing Halo this Tuesday. Um, uh, but next week, we are returning with Phil's God of War 2018 review. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, playthrough. Uh, the Jack 3 after the hype review going live Tuesday, 8 a.m., youtube.com slash two penny games cast. Please check that out. And then all through the week uh metal gear solid 2 uh phil's first time playing uh is is going to be going live so keep an eye out for all of those very fun very exciting stuff uh and until next week have a good week and connor say goodbye to the people goodbye